Good evening, folks, and a hearty welcome to our drive-in theater. We have a wonderful evening's entertainment lined up for you, one that will provide several hours of pleasurable relaxation and diversion for you and your family. Did you fail to dress up for tonight's show? No tie, an old shirt and slacks, a house dress? Well, don't give it a thought. We're glad you came as you are. We just want you to enjoy yourselves. Don't forget to visit our refreshment center during the intermission or any time. You love the tasty array of snacks we have to offer. So will the youngsters. Everything is quality and mm, so good. We hope you'll make this a weekly visit. Bring the family. Bring your friends. There are always wonderful new pictures to see, delightful snacks to nibble, a gay, pleasant evening for all. Oh, a word of caution. Don't drive over 10 miles an hour in the theater area for your safety's sake. And mom or pop, go with the kids when they leave the car. We hope you have a wonderful time. Come back soon. Engine's still warm. Say, did you see the skid marks out here? They go at a direct right angle to the direction of travel. No digs in the macadam either. Somebody was hurt. There's blood all over this thing. What is this black menace that kills everything it sees and hears? No human mind could imagine the enormous destructive power of this maddened, killing thing. If you're young people in love, look out. If you're driving a lonely road, you're as good as dead. There's been a lot of livestock missing lately. That doesn't make headlines, but now it's people. Never in the history of the United States, a monster of such size and power and horrifying hatred of man. So look quickly. A woman. What? What weird creature fills the night with strange and mystifying terror? It's our theory that we've penetrated the time barrier. We're the first explorers of the actual future. Two men brought together by science, torn apart by a woman unwilling to hurt the man who loves her, unable to resist the other. Two men defying unknown terrors to project the mind and lives of men into the future. Terror from the year 5000. Terror that mesmerizes, paralyzes a man's mind. When our scientists realized that your device had penetrated the time barrier, I was selected to come and lead you into our world of the future. You must come with me. Victor, what are you doing? I'm going into the future. You don't know what you're saying. You're ill. You should be... No, I must go. Leave him alone. You'll know terror that breaks the sound barrier, the light barrier, the time barrier, when you see... Terror from the year 5000.
Now, on with the show. In the enormity of the West, there are still vast and virtually unexplored regions, bleak and desolate, where no human ever goes and no life is ever seen. It is as though the land had been posted by God. It is in these lonely areas of the impenetrable forest and dark shadows that the Gila monster still lives. How large the dreaded Gila monster grows, no man can say.
think, eh? Hey, what do you think? Oh, hey, hey. You better cool that foot jazz. No, What's that? Well, Spook will be charging you with an entertainment tax. We're going to charge you for everything else. Hi, Spook. Hi, Kev. Hey, uh, how are the new pots on the bomb? Where's Pat and Liz? I thought we'd be the last ones here. Yeah, they're probably out spooking around somewhere. <laughs> yeah, you know. Maybe they broke down. Not in his heap. I worked on it myself. <laughs> oh, that, makes it too cool. that wouldn't make any difference if he goofed a speed shift or something. Yeah, and that squirrel is just the one that could do it. Hey, John. <laughs> you got it. Oh, wonderful. What kept you so long, Lisa? Oh, Mr. Wheeler smoked two cigars at the table after dinner. And I could not get out of the dishes until it was through. What time is that, Lee? Pa did not come home for dinner. That's why his father was so upset. There's old man Harris. Man, that fellow has a jewel of a car. Well, luck, man. Yeah, well. <laughs> hey! Oh, hi, Mr. Harris. Hi. Mr. Harris. Hi, hey, how are you, young man? Yeah, hello, fisherman. You want to sell that deuce? Why, you fellas always after me to buy my car. That 32 is the ideal stock to convert to a bomb. Buying a car, son, is just like getting married or going to New York City. Everybody ought to do it once, but nobody ought to do it twice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, I can get you a good price on that. Paid $695 for that car 26 years ago. 10 years ago, wasn't worth a dime. Last month, I turned down 100 for it. When it gets back up to 695 again, I'll sell it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Hey, Spook, uh, give me a snort of that there soda pop. <laughs> <laughs> hey, gang, you know, this will be Lisa's first trip to a drive-in. Oh, we have drive-ins in France, too. Yeah? Yes, I went twice with my brother on his motor scooter. He's <laughs> <laughs> on a motor scooter. Now, that's my idea of absolutely nothing to do. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's go. Don't be too late. We're going to pull it on out. Hey, Chase. If the road's clear, I'll drag you to Bartonell's Corner. Oh, I can't. I'm driving barefoot. You still riding on that old rubber? Yeah. Hey, Spook, when Pat and Liz get here, will you tell them that we went to the drive-in and for them to catch up? Thank you. We sure will. And I'll give you 150 bucks. You're talking like my foot's asleep. <laughs> Who do you think he's playing with, kids? <laughs> <laughs> Sheriff, what's the trouble, Mr. Wheeler? Pat didn't come home last night. He didn't? No, evidently was out with Liz Humphreys. She didn't come home either. Oh? I want you to find out why. And don't leave a stone unturned in doing so. Do I make myself clear? I understand, Mr. Wheeler. There weren't any wrecks reported last night. Your son, Pat, he's about 19, isn't he? That's right. <laughs> Just a year older than I was when I got married. You think they eloped? He wouldn't dare. I didn't say that. But if they were out together all night, you better hope they have. This is a missing persons report, and I want to know what you're going to do about it. Well, I'll send in an APB on both of them and the car. I don't think it'll do much good if they went off to get married. They'd already be across the state line. Well, if he got married, I'll wring his neck. If you ask me, it's that Chase Winston. He's older than the others. Sets them all wrong. Why, he's got more influence on Pat than I have. Chase Winstead does more about keeping them in line than getting them in trouble than I know. 
He's supported his mother and sister ever since his dad died on one of your drill rigs. Your son could take a page out of his book, Mr. Wheeler. When I get through with my son, he won't have a book left. Now you locate him or I'll have your job. If you want to be the only peace officer in 10,000 square miles and 1,000 miles of road, you're welcome to it. I'll do everything I can to locate both of them, Mr. Wheeler. Hi, Sheriff. Hi, sir. Got a new set of wheels. Yeah, new to me. That clunker I had, I'd be chasing you boys on a bicycle in a couple of days. Oh, come on, Sheriff. Outside of Pat Wheeler, we haven't had a ticket in our gang in eight months. Oh, I was just kidding. What's the mileage on it? Oh, about 35,000. County bought it from the state. Those lucky stiffs on highway get a new car every year. Let me have it for a couple of days and I'll tune it up for you. Oh, you'd choke it off so I could never catch you. You couldn't catch that deuce of mine right now. Now, let me have that patrol car. I'll turn it into a slingshot that'll catch anybody. We'll make a deal. Hey. Just between us, Liz Humphreys and Pat Wheeler didn't get home last night. Oh. They were supposed to meet us at the drive-in, but they didn't show up. We wondered what happened. Were they in any kind of trouble? What do you mean? You know. Uh, no, I don't think so. Chase, level with me. I'm almost positive they weren't in any trouble. I'd know. Do you think they might have run off to get married? Well, they've been going steady for over a year now. And I know they talked about it, but... No, not like for right now. Did Pat have any money stashed? <sighs> yeah, some. Like how much? Well, he was talking about getting a new blower and a mill. That's about 500 bucks. Where did he get that kind of money? He saved it. His old man gives him a good allowance when he's not mad at him. What bank does he use? None. He's afraid his dad would find out. He could have been saving if he got married, couldn't he? It's his money. I guess he could do whatever he wants with it. But you know, if he eloped, his old man had put him down flat. I know. But Pat's smart enough to provide for himself till the old man cooled off. Pat's the only one of the gang I couldn't slow down. Did you check the hospitals? Yeah. Where could I find the rest of the gang? Well, I don't know about Bob and Gordy, but Chuck and Rick went over to Easton. They wanted to check with the wheel cats about next Saturday night's platter party. Next Saturday night? Yeah. You warn the gang I'll be cruising that pass that night. No dragon. Okay, I'll tell them. If you get any postcards from those two, let me know. Hello, Sheriff. I don't have any work for you, Miss Humphreys. She's a good girl, Sheriff. I ain't worried. How come you drove around the truck all night then? You don't think she might have eloped, do you? Could be. She's pretty close mouthed about her affairs. More the likes of Wheeler. Ain't marrying our kind of folks. You don't have a phone, so I just dropped around to let you know I'm doing everything I can. We know that, Sheriff, and we sure do appreciate it. Sorry, Elizabeth, put you to so much trouble. It's never any trouble looking after kids. Let me know if I can help, Sheriff. Thanks, Ev. Thank you, Sheriff. Goodbye. We have got to quit worrying this way. We've got to trust in the Lord. We've got to pray. Morris. Morning, Sheriff. Let me smell your breath. Okay. Go ahead. Okay.
Hi, Chase. Hi. Did you get that diesel tractor fixed? Yeah, she's all set. Good. My boy, that's one trip I'm glad I don't have to make very often. The stuff heavy? I'll help you unload. No, not heavy. It's hot. Wheeler's sinking another oil well and he's afraid of fire when it comes in. There's four quarts of natural glycerin out there in that cap. He wants us to keep it out back in the storehouse. You know, last winter when number 21 came in, I made $100 with that stuff. Dad showed me how to use it. It's not so bad, as long as it doesn't get nervous. Well, I'm sorry I was so late getting back. But with that cargo, I was afraid to do over five miles an hour. Oh, it's not so dangerous as long as it's in a nitro case. But I took these out of the case. Holy smoke. You're lucky to be standing here talking about it. I'll put it in the shed. Much action this afternoon? Uh, sheriff got a new patrol car. We'll get a tune-up job out of that. Is that nitro safe out there? Well, if it decides to blow, it's not safe anywhere. I'll get it. That's not our ring. No, it's the sheriff's. If there's been a wreck, I get a tow job out of it. I also have a deal with the ambulance if someone's hurt. <laughs> you work all the angles, don't you, Chase? Mr. Compton, I have to. Hello, Sheriff. Yes? About 12 miles out beyond the Red Schoolhouse, a car has run into the ditch. Oh? Yeah, it's a pretty bad wreck. What kind of a car? Oh, it's a sedan, a Pontiac, I believe. Someone could have been hurt pretty bad. Yeah. Maybe she'd get out there pretty quick. Uh, did you stop and investigate? There's been a wreck 12 miles out of town. Where's the wrecker? Home. I used the A-frame to build a doggone rock garden. Look, you take your car and keep the city wreckers off. I'll get our wrecker and follow you. who was on that party line a while ago. Well, it cost me to get on that line with you. I figured since it was on your call station anyway, you wouldn't care. Yeah. This is a pretty good one. Yeah. This engine's still warm. Say, did you see the skid marks out here? They go at a direct right angle to the direction of travel. Yeah. No digs in the macadam either. Somebody was hurt in here. There's blood all over the upholstery. Let's take a look around. I've already looked around. There's nobody here. Real good? Yeah, real good. Well, maybe somebody came by and picked them up. It could have been the people that called in. No, they'd have said something. Then why didn't they wait? People will go to the trouble to report an accident, but they won't stay around. Don't want to fill out the reports. So what do you do now? Well, I'll take the license number and engine number. Call headquarters. Maybe they've got a line on them. Chase, how are your headlights? Fine, just fine. Both of them burning? How many times have I warned you about getting that headlamp fixed? Twice. But the first time it was just a suggestion. Seal beam only cost $4. Had some unexpected expenses. Oh, Missy? Yeah, the doctor said she'd be able to start walking again pretty soon and took all the money I had to make a part down payment on her braces. You know, I think this is a complete washout. You probably got a screwdriver. I don't think the insurance company had missed one of those headlamps.
I got the whole story. The car was stolen out of state and the plates were stolen in state. So whoever stole it, it beat it, hurt or not, as long as they could navigate. Well, is there anything else I can do here, Sheriff? If not, I'll get this on back to the garage. No, go ahead. Chase, will you give me a hand? I want to take some pictures of those skid marks. You stand by them for a scale. Sure, glad to, Sheriff. Good. Trouble, Chase? I don't know, Sheriff. Take a look. It was just sitting here. Probably fell off of a car. No scratches on it. Well, yeah, maybe it landed in a bush. Now, as thin as that imitation leather is, even a bush should take some of it off. Was it just like that when you found it? Yeah, straight up. Probably belonged to some hitchhiker. Or it might have belonged to the fellow that stole that car and wrecked it. Say, look at this. A half a pack of cigarettes, one unlit. That suitcase don't belong to any car thief. He was around here too long. I'll take it in. I'll put it in the car for you. Somebody will be around to claim it. See you later, son. Right, Sheriff. Bed. I got your phone call. When I was serving dinner to Mr. Willow, he became very angry. He said if I saw you again, you would have me sent back to France. He can't do that. Oh, yes, he can. He's my sponsor. He put up the bond. That was to guarantee that you wouldn't become a ward of the state. Now, we don't have to worry about that. You know how to speak English well enough to get a job anywhere. He said it's immoral for me to go out with you. What's immoral about? Nothing. I don't want to go away, Chase. You won't have to, honey. You think it's your fault that Pat ran away? Ling, think whatever he wants to think. Shouldn't take it out on you. But we hadn't better take any chances. You go back inside. And look, don't worry. Everything's going to be okay. Seven to a box, no corners. I'm a round house. Sorry, I asked, Mr. Uh, Smith. Horatio Alger Smith. Sorry, I asked that too. How'd you get in the ditch? You fall asleep? Oh no, no, no. There was, there was this big 
pink and black thing drove right in front of me. It had stripes this wide. Sure, sure. Look, you come up and sit in my truck, and I'll get your car out. Okay, that sounds like a good deal. Who knows, maybe we can... You can't drive this car. Fender's cutting the wheel. Sure I can. The motor works, see? But thanks for everything, Dad. You're a cotton-picking prince. Okay, just a second. I'll get out of the way. What is it? Now move over, Dad. I want to pass. Now? I think you better give me a tow, Dad. The steering wheel won't work. Okay. You take a nap. My baby, she rocks and rolls and rocks whenever she walks. My baby, she rocks. And rolls and rocks whenever she talks. My baby's a rock and roll and tippy toe and never know when always blowing, baby. My baby, she swings and sings and swings whenever I bring her things. She swings and sings and swings for little diamond rings. Swing and sing and bells are ring and happy fling and pleasure ring and baby. My baby, she rocks. And rolls and rocks whenever she walks. My baby, she swings and sings and swings whenever I bring her things. A rock and roll and tippy toe and ever know and always glow and swing and sing and bells are ring and happy fling, pleasure ring and baby. Good afternoon, Mr. Smith. Like man, guys have had their heads chopped off for less than that. For what? For feeling so doggone good when I feel so bad. How'd I get here anyway? I told you in this morning, remember? As a matter of fact, I remember very, very little. You said somebody ran you into the ditch, but I didn't see any other cars. How'd you ever get me in that bed anyway? I carried you in there and I sat on you till you fell asleep. That must have been quite a chore. You wouldn't have gotten very far in your condition. Well, look, I really appreciate it. Um, Chase Winstead. Chase. And I, uh, by golly, how much I owe you? Well, I bent the fender out from the wheel. Want me to fill it in and touch it up for you? No, I don't think so. I'll, uh, get that done when I get back to the city. Here, have some coffee. Oh, great. How about two bucks? Man, this coffee's worth two bucks all by itself. How about the toe? No, I was coming this way anyway. I... Missed out on a little studying time. Make it three bucks. <laughs> Dad, you go to school? Uh, sort of. I take a correspondence course in engineering. Well, look, I really feel indebted to you, and I'd like to do something to pay you back. Now, next time you're in the town, there's my card. Look me up, will you? All right, will do. Okay. On, by the way. Buy yourself a sponge rubber hammer, man. <laughs> All right, I will. I'll see you, Chase. Thank you. Steamroller Smith, the disc jockey. Mr. Smith! Two twenties. How about that? Howdy, Sam. Have you heard anything from Pat and Liz? No, nothing. Chase, I'm in a jam, and I need your help. Wheeler swings a big enough stick in this country to make it rough, and he's doing it. Oh, I can understand his concern about Pat, but I just don't have a big enough force to comb this area inch by inch. Is he demanding that? There was a man killed in a wreck in a small canyon in a big city last year. And it took them 19 days to find him. 
I don't know what they expect of me. Yeah, I remember that. Well, look, Sheriff, maybe I can get tomorrow off and... I'll get the gang and we can go out and search that pass. At least you can put that in your report. I was hoping you'd say that. I can start at the upper end and work towards you. Uh, can I have your help in another matter? Sure, what? You remember how those skid marks just went at right angles to the direction the car was traveling? That's right, they did. Headquarters think I'm nuts. Well, then they're nuts. Didn't, didn't you send them that picture? Well, I'm not the world's greatest photographer. Pictures didn't come out. You can't see the skid marks on the blacktop. Well, that's what happened. I even wiped up the rubber dust with my fingers. You might have to sign a statement to that effect for me. You got it. Look, you can even see the bald spots on the tires where they went sideways. At... Yeah, that's the spot, all right. But there's another thing that puzzles me. Yeah, what? How those tires got off of that car and almost on yours. Well, look, on, on this wreck, they'd rot. And on my, on my rod, they could prevent a blowout. Maybe even an accident. Well, take good care of them in case the owner shows up. Right. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Right. Let's call it a day. We've covered half the roads in this county. Yeah. How about that ravine? That runs along here for about eight miles. We'll start from here and you come from the other end. Well, all right. Right. down around here. Look at that. What is it, Shay? Looks like an animal of some sort drug something along here. You mean a wild animal here? Sure, could be anything, even a mountain lion. <laughs> oh, come on. Chase. Ooh, that's bitter. Must have an awful lot of mineral in it. Come on, let's go. Oh, wait a minute. Let's take a breather first. Chase, I, I don't like this place. Let's go back. Are you afraid? Now, you come on over here with me and sit in the shade and I'll let this go. Bottom of the wash. Two or three miles back by the old reservoir. Were they in it? No, nothing. Uh, drive me back to my car and I'll bring up the record. 
I wonder what that was. Oh, probably just a little rock slide. For some reason, this place gives me the creeps. It always has. Lisa, turn the motor on. The winch is already engaged. Now if I yell, turn the key off. Okay. Back the garage, okay? Okay, let's go, Jenny. By the reservoir and William's wash, they weren't in it. No sign of blood or anything. You know, I think they were thrown clear. Did you search the area? Yeah, Gordy went down the ravine for about a mile and... Oh, he looked beyond the wreck for a couple hundred yards. Wouldn't you say, Gordy? At least that far. Did you see any footprints? No, none. This thing's been around just about the same as that sedan. Like it had been hit with a ten-ton rubber mallet. Pretty rough trip down that cliff that could have done it. Yeah, I'll have to go over that area with a rake. You know, I've been thinking, if if Liz and Pat had have eloped, they wouldn't have taken his car, because old man Wheeler would have it traced right off. Why, well, maybe he stored it, Chase, and then it was stolen. Yeah, if it was stolen and somebody parked it there, well, the brakes could have faded and it rolled off the edge. It would be a strange coincidence if they came back to this part of the county. Possibility makes some sense, though. I'll get my gear and dust for fingerprints. Gosh, I wish you boys had called me before you drug it out. I might have found some clues to help us out. I'm sorry, Sheriff. The hard part's telling Mr. Wheeler. I sure dread that. It's not like we found them there. He's sure gonna raise Ned, because I didn't find this wreck sooner. Where's Mr. Compton? Oh, he went down the field with a load of fuel oil. Back in two or three hours. I'm going to close up. I'll see you later.
plate. Now, Chase Winston, just a minute, not so fast there. <laughs> what for? <laughs> Did you ever play football? With the Green Bay Packers. Hi! <laughs> Oh, Jase, put me down. No, not till you tell me what's going on. All right, if you'll close your eyes. All right, I don't know what's happening, but they're closed. Keep them closed. They're closed. This is silly. Now, open. Look what Lisa got me. Stay there, Chase. Watch. Chase, I can get up. Stay there. Oh, that was wonderful, baby. Just wonderful. I've been practicing all afternoon. The braces over, and I walked all the way twice. I want to do it right for you. <laughs> Would you like to hear a song? There was a mushroom, sad little mushroom. There was a meadow ready to cry there was a sparrow gray little sparrow there was an eagle silent and high and the lord said laugh children laugh the lord said laugh children laugh the lord said laugh children laugh the lord said laugh and the Lord, he said, I created for you a world of joy from out of the blue. And all that is left to complete the joy, just the laugh of a girl and boy. Yay, 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 yay. And there was a garden, a beautiful garden, held in the arms of a world without joy. And then there was laughter, wonderful laughter, for he created a girl and a boy. And the Lord said, oh, laugh, children laugh, the Lord said, 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 laugh. Important, isn't it, Chase? Oh, it sure is. And you know, I never felt any more like laughing than I do right now. I didn't think you'd be able to do that good in a week. Didn't you, really? Honest, but you know, you're gonna have to work real hard. And you mustn't be disappointed if it takes a long time, okay? That's enough for one day, Missy. It's your bedtime. Do I have to, Chase? You sure do. Show me how you can walk. Good night, Lisa. That was a wonderful thing for you to do, Lisa. I wanted to. Now you're broke, aren't you? I was going to pick him up in the morning. I know. When you showed me that money, I was afraid you'd get there first. I'm still going to pay you for it. No. Yes. No. Yes. Hello. Yeah, Sheriff. Well, you should have been back an hour ago. No. Where? That's awful. No, it couldn't be Mr. Compton. 
All right. But at the garage? All right, I'm leaving now. What is it, Chis? It's a wreck, an oil truck. It could be Mr. Compton. Honey, I'm awfully sorry, but I've got to leave. Sheriff, you got a sore foot. Oh, no. We can take my model A. She's all shiny bright. Now we'll take my sore. car. Come on, Harris. Did you see it? No, I didn't see it, but I sure heard about it. Can I open this thing up? Yeah, go ahead. been hurt and crawled away. Let's look around. Come on, Harris. Okay. Compton! This is Compton! Find anything, Sheriff? Well, let's go over this again. How did you get into the act? I told you once. Well, tell me again. Well, I was a barreling along in my Model A. She don't look like much now, but she used a beauty when I first The accident. Into. He'll go, though. Get up to 60. The accident. Yeah. Just the accident. Well, I'll tell you. I wish you would. This feller seen the headlights coming up the grade towards him, and all of a sudden they come as to going over and over, and then blew it. Blew it! She blew up. Well, he seen somebody is in a mite of trouble, so uh, he come in the store talking about it. That's when I offered to call you. Did you get the name of the witness? No. Did he see anything else? No. Do you want to wait in the car for us? No. Well, you're going to anyway. Okay, Sheriff, okay. Like you say, always obey the law. Do this, do that. Somebody tells you no, somebody... Any luck, Chase? No, nothing. Pat and Liz might have eloped. But Compton ought to be around here. Maybe he's in the hospital. No. I checked there before I left my place. Would Compton have any reason to want to get lost? No, none that I can think of. You would have no reason to know about this, but there's been a lot of livestock missing lately. One here, one there. That doesn't make headlines, but now it's people. And you think there's a tie-up? I don't know. What we need is a criminal investigator, and headquarters won't send one down here. Well, maybe they will now. Yeah, maybe. Did you notice those skid marks? Just like the others, straight across the road. If it had been hit by another vehicle, the paint would be knocked off. What batters a car around like it was a toy? How's the barn coming along for the party? All right. I'll be done in about an hour or so. Say, you and Chase sure got off light. You took off this morning. you just been sitting around here on your can all day long. That barn was a place to clean. Did you get the high five set up? Yeah. Well, you steamboats and dreamboats, that's the steamroller on another session of the mold. old steamroller here at KILT. Uh, if any of you round rocks get lonesome for my voice, I'll be emceeing a platter party tonight out at Hargate Hayes Barn on Route 43. Drop in. I'll flatten you. Hey, man, that's us. We got the steamroller coming out. That's where Chase has been all day, getting steamrolled. This will be a blast. How about that guy? Hey, little man, you sure had a busy day. Getting that paint job and Steamroller Smith. Now, how'd you guys find out about Steamroller Smith? Well, he just said so on his program. Said it right out over the network. Uh, I wanted it to be a surprise. Well, come on, don't spread it around, huh? How are the preparations coming? 
Oh, that'll be finished about 45 minutes. The gang won't start arriving from east until 9.30. We're under the wire with time to spare. No sweat. Oh, I hate the ground you walk on, little darling. For all them things that you have did to me. Oh, you nag me till you're hoarse, so I'm a suing for divorce. Little darling, I'll forget your memory. <laughs> I grab it's good. the same story a man down here told me. Something real strange must have happened down there. Oh, yeah, yeah. He'll be handy if you want him. Right. Sit down, Harris. You be going down to the wreck, Sheriff? No, that's not in my territory. Headquarters already have a report. The troopers will take care of that. Harris, tell me again about the train wreck. Well, I was driving along quite like in my model A. Bought it at 32 for six... Just a minute, just a minute. I ask you what time it is, and you tell me how to build a clock. Just the facts about the wreck. Well, I was driving along quite like it. The wreck. Then I... Turn around and come back down here and told you about it. Give me your keys, Harris. Key? Our key? What for? For spinning a yarn like that and driving while drunk. I demand a sobriety test. That does it. Go lock yourself up. I demand a sobriety test because I ain't been drinking. Well, at least that is not heavy. Whatever you think's right. Put your way in the cell. Put your way. Well, you can win them all, can you, Sheriff? You can call your wife if you want to, Harris. Why? <laughs> Are you crazy, Sheriff?
My baby, she rocks and rolls and rocks whenever she talks. My baby's a rock and roll. Hey, you gonna leave home? I'm going to spend the night with the Blackwells. Mommy said it was all right. Will you take me over? Well, I don't know, Missy. Gosh, that's two or three miles out of my way. And... Oh, sure, we will. Chase, what in the world have you done to that car of yours? It's a new fuel mixture. You like it? I just barely touched the gas pedal and the back wheel started to spin. Why, I was two blocks down the road before I even knew I'd left home. Come on, Mom, I'm just trying to make a hot rodder out of you. I'll get it. Hello. Yeah, hello, Sheriff. The what? Book on reptiles. Yeah, I guess I still have it around here somewhere. Yeah, sure. I have to take Missy over by the Blackwells. I'll stop by on my way to pick up Lisa. Okay? Well, now I'm going to tell you something you don't know. I've been talking to a zoologist. And the Gila monster size is controlled, uh, like everything else, by a sort of a thyroid or pituitary gland. Sometimes a change in diet can throw the balance all out of whack. Either the cells break down too fast or build up too slow. And this upset makes either runts or giants out of them. Good, but what's that mean to me? Uh, I'm coming to that. The zoologist also told me about a, a doctor who just found the bones of some huge animals down in Tanganyika. And the theory was that uh, they lived in kind of river delta country, and certain salts had washed into the valley, been absorbed by the plants, and then transferred to the animals, causing them to be giants. Hmm. Well, I, yeah, I know. I probably sound a little bit like Harris, but yeah. let me tell the whole thing in my own words. There was another report out of Russia or the Ukraine. It was in the paper a couple of months ago. Maybe you saw it about a baby that weighed 130 pounds when it was 10 months old and was taller than its mother? Grew up to be a giant. Yeah, and that same thing could happen right here. Did you see any footprints around any of those wrecks? No. Gila monster footprints? Yeah, a big one, about the size of a bus. Oh, come on. Are you serious? Well, I don't know. But Harris saw it, and some of the survivors of the train wreck saw it. A giant lizard. Train wreck? Where? At the bridge over Wilson's Wash. When? Tonight, about an hour ago. The troopers were inclined to pass it off as shock or optical illusion. And you can't always believe what Harris said. A Gila monster. Pink and black stripes. You know, I towed a guy in the other day, and he said he'd been forced off the road by something like that. I didn't believe him because he'd been drinking. And another thing, when we were looking for Pat's car, we saw where something had been drugged down the wash. You know, if they could have gotten that big, they could have knocked Mr. Compton's truck off that road. They could have gotten him. I shouldn't have told you about this until after the party, but I just thought you'd want to know. Hadn't we better warn everybody? No. It operates in and around the wash. And the troopers have got that staked off for a couple of miles. Just keep it to yourself. It might cause panic. Okay, Sheriff, whatever you say. Try and forget it for now and have some fun, will you, boy? Yeah. surprise for you. We got the king of the DJs. Oh. Now you've all heard him on his platter show on KILT. Oh. That's right. Oh. 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 Okay, your old dad here has some small words and some great records. 
I want you to have a ball tonight. Let's begin with one of the top kilt survey songs. What do you say now? Let's everybody dance. Here we go. Let's go, everybody. mind telling me what this is all about? Have you been down to the train wreck? No. Well, I have. I talked to a trooper about my son's car. He said it shouldn't have been moved until a thorough investigation had been made and it had been photographed. This wasn't done, was it, Sheriff? I thought not. It was removed and clues lost without authority. You didn't put that in your report, did you, Sheriff? Of course you didn't, and I'll tell you why. You were protecting that Chase Winston. Covering him regardless of the effect it might have on others. Chase was only trying to help. He's your son's friend, probably the best one he ever had. Of course it wasn't in the report. What good would it do? Any kid can make a mistake, Mr. Wheeler, even yours. But Sheriff, it's my son that's missing. Let me ask you something else. Have you heard the reports about a giant lizard? Do you believe them? I don't know, Mr. Wheeler. Doesn't seem possible. Well, why not? There have been giants before. That's true. But how could anything that big go unnoticed in this area? Have you ever walked the length of Williams Wash? No. You know anybody that has? No. That area is so choked with underbrush, it isn't even good hunting ground. And I say it is possible for a giant lizard to have lived there for years without being seen. Now, if that is the case, my son's dead. So is Compton. I can't blame you for what's happened to Pat, but Compton's death is on your hands. How did you come to that conclusion? I'll tell you how. His truck was found only two miles beyond Pat's car. And if you'd investigated that area thoroughly, as you're paid to do, Compton might not have died. Well, now come out here. I want to show you something else. Now, something may have hit this car, but it didn't take the tires off. And where did those new white sidewalls on Chase Winston's hot rod come from? Here, I guess. There was a towing charge against he us. He presumed the bill wouldn't be paid, so he borrowed the tires in the meantime? Perhaps. That's thievery, destroying evidence and obstructing justice. Now, your last official act of office will be to arrest that boy and bring him in. And I'll go along to make sure that it's done. A fellow dropped in over KILT the other day and played me a great new song. I thought it was just fine. I want to play it for you. We got a little pickup uh, group together and cut a demo disc on it. I want to play it for you now and see what you think about it. By the way, the first person who identifies the singer on the record gets two free rides on my elephant in Bangkok, Siam. <laughs> but you got to pay your own way over there and back. Oh. Oh. Okay. Here it is now. See what you think of it. A liver problem is not too strange Cause they aren't made of that away Hey, great No, they aren't made of that away <laughs> But if you made an hard design Well, 
Well, I can give you gold and fine. Yes, I can give you gold and fine. Feathers yet. I'm going to play the rest of it. How do you like it? Okay, who's the singer? Elvis, one of the Everly. Bill Darnell. Kate Smith. Oh. Oh. Very funny, but you lose. Look, the same guy you hear singing on the record also wrote the song. Now, now, who is it? Does anybody know? Who is it? Okay, okay, okay. It's going to come out on records in a couple of months, and you can find his name on the label. Oh, no, no, no. Who is it, Lisa? Come on, tell us. Sam did it. You're oh, right. You did it, Chase. Why didn't you say something? You didn't tell us. Well, I didn't know there was anything I'd want to admit to. Oh, oh, no. No. Come on up here, boy. Come on. Come on. Come on. Chase, come on. Come on. Also over at the station the other day, Chase played me another little song. It's kind of different from this one. But I imagine with a little coaxing, you know, by hitting your hands together like this, he might give you a little preview of it. What do you say? Yeah, yeah, come on, come on, come on. And the Lord said, laugh, children laugh, the Lord said laugh. Children laugh, the Lord said laugh. Children laugh, the Lord said laugh. Children laugh. Stop that thing. I don't know, but I'm going down to the train wreck and get some troopers. If we pump enough lead into that thing, we may hit a vulnerable spot. We know you're going to have to give me a hand. But how? Keep these kids here. I don't want anybody roaming around. Where are we going? Storage shed. I've got an idea that might work. You've been after this. Now you've got it. You're deputized. Listen, kids, Winner's my deputy. You'll take your orders from him. Arrest anybody that tries to get away. The sheriff says this is a place to stay. But well, we're not staying here. That's right. I'll have to arrest anyone that leaves. No, we're oh. leaving. Oh.
you take these keys and wait inside the office till I get back. I told you to wait inside. Why don't you do what I tell you? I haven't got much time. You're not going to leave me, Chess. I'm going to help. Do you know what's in here? Nitroglycerin, enough to blow up half this town. It doesn't matter. I'm still going to help. All right, now take these and hold them and don't let them bump. And for heaven's sakes, don't drop them. Now hold those. They generally travel in a straight line. Good Lord, he's hit the Blackwell home. That's where Missy is. Mrs. Blackwell. Nitro, we're cutting across. Keep that stuff still. Do you want to blow us up? There they are! There is Missy! Missy! It's all right, Missy. It's all right. Lisa, get Missy and hold her down. And both of you lie flat. That's okay, honey. I tore my new dress. Oh, we can get you a new dress. Oh, a hundred dresses. Everybody all right? Yeah. On the way back, we picked up his trail. Followed him across country. What did you hit him with? My brand new 100% completed hot rod. You'd have had to start in the next county to get up enough momentum to do that to him. Not with four quarts of nitroglycerin riding with you. You rode across that rough field carrying nitro? Yes, sir. Do you know what could have happened to you? It did. I lost my car. Oh, don't worry about that. The railroad will be glad to buy you a new one. Did you see it? I sure did, Missy. You were really traveling. I thought I told you to keep those kids up at the barn. Well, uh, how do you arrest a bunch of kids going in all different directions? Do you realize what would have happened if that thing had turned back? Same thing that happened to Pat. Sheriff, your job is a much bigger one than I thought. 
Since Compton's gone, I guess Chase is out of a job. That's right. Would you make it a point to have the boy come around and see me in the morning? I'll bring him around in the morning. secret sauce to perfection. And just like always, James River Smithfield Barbecue is good enough to be a great snack, hearty enough to fill a pioneer's appetite. You'll understand why John Smith stayed in old Virginia. One of the best things about this tradition is we make it quick and easy for you. Be sure to visit our concession stand now for James River Smithfield Barbecue. You were interviewing a stomach. Hello there. What is life like as a stomach? Oh, boy, it was humdrum. I mean, until what's-his-name discovered Tony's Pizza. Tony's Pizza? Yeah, I was suffering from the pizza cravings until Tony's came along. Crispy, crushed, and zesty sauces. <laughs> wow! And so now... What's that? Another pizza craving. Just thinking about Tony's sets it off. Oh, wh where are you going? He's going to get a Tony's Pizza. And I, anyway... Does your stomach send you pizza craving signals? Oh, wow. Tony's, the pizza craver's pizza. Available at the concession stand. aroma for you, but not for mosquitoes. Pick is easy to use. Light it and forget it. The exclusive aluminum lined ashtray top means not an ash falls on the dash. Pick's aroma keeps mosquitoes, gnats, and sandflies away. 
Pick is the best protection for barbecues, fishing and camping trips, or just relaxing in the yard. No more sleepless nights or mosquito bites. Pick is harmless to children and pets, too. So if you don't want our company ever anywhere, and just like Pick him, see what I mean? Bye. Pick is on sale at the refreshment stand now. convenience, we have an attractive refreshment stand with a parade of items to tempt your taste. Hot buttered popcorn, golden good and fresh from the popper, your favorite candies, wholesome and rich and full of flavor, ice cream and other good things to eat, plus ice cold Coca-Cola. So bright, so bracing, with a taste and tingle all its own. Pause and refresh with a Coke at our convenience stand right now. snack bar, things go better with Coke. It's intermission time. Time to pause and refresh at the snack bar. 
During this short break, you can treat your taste to good food and sparkling cold beverages, including delicious Coca-Cola. If you're hot dog hungry, we have them. Sizzling, juicy hot dogs served in warm, oven-fresh buns, plus a complete menu of all your favorites. Visit the Refreshment Center now. Enjoy delicious food and ice-cold Coca-Cola. In the year 1947, man broke through the sound barrier. In the year 1958, man launched the first satellite and pierced the space barrier. Now, in an isolated area of central Florida, Man struggles to penetrate the most imposing barrier of all, the time barrier. Here, Professor Howard Erling, nuclear physicist, probes relentlessly into the future, only to unleash upon the world terror from the year 5,000. For a moment, I thought you For a meant... moment, it looked life-size. Just an optical illusion. No doubt a refracted image. Quick, help me shut it off. We pushed the voltage too high. That settles it. No more forced experiments until we get outside verification. We've been going over the same ground for months now. And we'll continue to do so until we're thoroughly sure of why this happens. Not for my money, we won't. Victor, when you invested your money in this project, I knew it was more for personal than scientific reasons. But I accepted your help only on condition that I make the decisions. Look, Professor, I never pretended to be a scientist. But I know one thing. My old man didn't get rich waiting for outside verification. He just plowed ahead and he got results. I'm sorry, Victor, but the kind of results you're after involve too much risk. If you want to withdraw your help, you know I wouldn't walk out. And you know why. All right, then. We've got work to do. Let's get busy and try to neutralize that statue. Come in, please. Did you read this telegram? Yes, but I can't make heads or tails of it. Now listen to this. Do not understand why you have not replied to my letters. You have proof that I am not insane. 
please establish date of origin of statue to your own satisfaction. Wire reply immediately. Professor Howard Erling, Spooner Beach, Florida. What statue? Have we received anything from Professor Erling? There was a package in the morning's mail. I was just going to open it. Perhaps that's it. Proof that I am not insane. look old to me. As a matter of fact, it looks new. Brand new. Exactly. Now, why do you suppose Professor Erling would send me a statue that's obviously modern and ask me to establish its date of origin? Isn't that what you do with that, uh, that carbon-14 thing you're always talking about? Find out how old things are? Miss Blake, you should know that that carbon-14 thing, as you call it, is only the most advanced method known to mankind for establishing the precise date of origin of archaeological artifacts. Well, that's what I said. Find out how old things are. All right, Miss Blake, you have it your way. What are you going to do with it? Miss Blake, ever since I studied with Professor Erling, I've been a little afraid of him. He says, establish date of origin of statue. Well, that's exactly what I'm going to do. sent you to me, but this much I do know, you can't exist. Not here and not now. Not for another 3,000 years. Did you find out how old the statue is? Oh, sure. According to the eminent Dr. Hedges, renowned expert in the field of dating archaeological objects, that statue was made in the year 5200 A.D. Is that so unusually old? Old? Did you hear me clearly, Miss Blake? I said 5200 A.D., not B.C. By my calculations, that statue doesn't even exist, and it won't exist for another 3,000 years. I know, I know. I sound like I'm a raving drunk even to myself. Oh, I didn't mean that. Call the Eastside Testing Laboratories and tell them we're going to send this statue over to them, and we want a metallurgical and chemical analysis right away. Yes, sir. I may not know how old she is, but I'm going to find out what she's made of. Here I go again with my Geiger counter. Boy, if I could have a buck for every guy who thinks he's found uranium. Yeah. What are you so wrapped up in? Now there is an interesting sample. What is it? Don't know yet. What'll it mean, Trude? Bye, gorgeous. Hey, that thing's radioactive. It's hot as a firecracker. Get that bucket of water, quick. Get some lead shielding on that thing and hurry. 
How dangerous is it? Well, it's hard to say exactly. My guess is that if you were constantly exposed to it for a week, I, you'd be a sick man. Two weeks, you'd be dead. This Professor Erling, would he have any reason to want to do harm to you? What are you suggesting? Well, maybe I've been seeing too much TV. Has it ever occurred to you that if you suddenly dropped dead, you'd be the victim of an almost perfect crime? Well, that's ridiculous. Professor Erling is an old friend of mine. Well, like they say, with a friend like that, you don't need an enemy. Did you have any luck on that long-distance call to uh, Professor Erling? This Plenty Beach operator tells me they have no phone listed in that name. I see. Well, I'll Will you call the airlines and arrange for a flight for me down to Spooner Beach, Florida? And then wire to Professor Erling and tell him the time of my arrival. And just to be on the safe side, I think you have arranged for a rental car at the airport. Yes. Tell me, my deadly little girlfriend, are there any more at home like you? Hedges, I presume. How did you know my name? I'm Claire Early, Professor Erling's daughter. As soon as I got to the airport, they told me I just missed you. How is your father? Is he well? I mean, is he all right? You mean, is he crazy, Dr. Hedges? No, Dad's perfectly sane. Well, the telegram and the statue. I sent them. Dad doesn't know a thing about them. You sent them? Well, I thought when you didn't answer his letters, that if you saw the statue and examined it with your own eyes, it might shock you into some sort of a reply. I never received any letters. And as for the statue shocking me, it certainly did. Then you were able to establish its age. That statue is dangerous. It's radioactive. Radioactive? Yes. I think I'm entitled to an explanation. Well, of course you are. And I'll give it to you as soon as we get to the house. So if you'll just follow me. Where are you taking me? To our place. It's on an island. An island? Mm-hmm. I'll explain on the way over. Who's that? Oh, that's Angelo. He's the chief cook and bottle washer. 
Excuse me, miss, but how do I know that you're Professor Erling's daughter? Victor was right. Scientists are the biggest old fogies in the world. Who's Victor? He's a man. Here's my driver's license and my car registration. Is that enough, or would you like my birth certificate? No, that's satisfactory, thank you. You sure? Excuse me, I don't mean to seem so suspicious, but all this is kind of new to me. I thought scientists were great explorers of the unknown. I'll do my exploring in the laboratory, if you don't mind. Coming? that Dad's theory about crossing the time barrier was ridiculous. He was disqualified for top secret work, so the missile center fired him. Fired him? Why? They said he was unreliable, a potential security risk. Why, that's ridiculous. We both laughed at first. Then we began to get anonymous phone calls. They said Dad was a traitor and that he ought to leave town. Is that why you moved to this island? Well, partly. Mainly because Dad's electrical equipment is so powerful that it messes up TV reception for miles around. I see. You think maybe your father's working that contraption of his again? Even if he is, it's never bothered us this far out. I'll bet that's what caused it. When you said his experimental equipment was powerful, it was the understatement of the century. If you want to eat, you have to work. Time is it, Victor? I, I, I sat down to do a little reading before dinner and I fell fast asleep. I don't know, I just woke up from a nap myself. Dad, look who's with me. Dr. Hedges from New York. Bob, Bob Hedges, this is a wonderful surprise. Victor, do you realize what this means? At last, we'll have outside verification of our experiments. I wish you told me you'd sent for Dr. Hedges. I'd like to have been prepared for him. statue was radioactive. Yes, Bob. What I want to know is why didn't somebody tell me? You've been told never to touch anything in the laboratory. It should have been enough. You needn't be so mean, Victor. You know, you're not my husband yet. Unfortunately, the appearance of so much radioactivity has forced us to stop our experiments until we find out much more about the powers we're dealing with, Bob. 
But weren't you working in your laboratory when we arrived? No. Victor and I haven't operated the apparatus for days now. Dr. Hedges, you must be exhausted after your trip. You're right, Victor. Come on, Bob. I'll have Angelo get you set upstairs. Good night, dear. Good night, right, Victor. Good night. Good night. The silly things to do. What? Getting that pompous hedges down here. Well, I thought that's what you and Dad wanted, someone to verify your findings. Yeah, verify? Can't you tell he's laughing up his sleeve at us? Oh, I don't think so. No? Did you see the way he smiled when your father told him that statue actually did come from the future? So he smiled. He looked like a boy psychiatrist listening to his pet loony. Victor. He just didn't understand that Dad was serious, that's all. Besides, I think he's cute. Cute? Victor, you're not just a wee bit jealous, are you? Who, me? Jealous of that overgrown boy scout? Oh, well, I thought if you were, there's something I ought to tell you. Oh? You don't have to. Angelo, what are you doing? Professor Irwin says Dr. Hedges is going to sleep in here. But the door is locked. I don't remember having no key to this room. Well, uh, leave that door alone. Put his things in my room. Professor Erling, the door to the spare room is locked and Angelo seems to have lost the key. I uh, had him put Bob's things in my room. Well, I hate to put you out. No, it's no trouble. It's only for one night, Bob. I'll have Angelo get it open tomorrow for you.
was looking for you on the bay side of the island. That's where we usually go swimming. Well, what's wrong with this? Nothing. Except there's no place to change. Well, I've got mine on. Oh. Why don't you go behind the trees and change? I won't watch. Can I trust you? Call it a calculated risk. Great, come on, get changed. <laughs> Dr. Hedges, Professor Erlen says he and Mr. Victor are ready in a laboratory now. Oh, good. Hurry up and get dressed, Bob. I'll be right out. Now you're really going to see something fantastic. All right, Victor. That's a tube off. That's a tube off. This is remarkable. The bottle you put in there is completely transformed. Not transformed, it's changed. Traded, if you like. What do you mean, traded? Think, Bob. Throughout human history, what has been the first activity of explorers of any new region? Map making, I suppose. No, Bob. Barter, trade. From Marco Polo with the Chinese to Columbus with the Indians. Or, in our own time, Bird and Perry were the Eskimos. Trade. Do you mean you actually think that you've contacted human beings of the future? Well, there's no other possible explanation. No disrespect, Professor, but everything you've been showing me has all the earmarks of a magician's trick. Oh, come on, Professor. We're wasting our time. Professor, do you mind if I sort of reshuffle the cards? But what, what, what do you mean, Bob? Well, supposing I take an object now, on the spur of the moment, something that hasn't been prepared, and we try to exchange it, as you say. Are you accusing us of fraud? No, there's a lot going on here I don't understand. It's all right, Victor. Being overly cautious is an occupational disease of most archaeologists. Exactly. 
Now, I wonder what our friends of the future would give for this five better Kappa key. What is it? There are Greek letters on the other side. Two words. Can you read it? What does it say? It says... Save us. this afternoon. Oh. Did he also tell you why we won't be getting any further messages? No, he didn't. And I will tell you. Just because that metal disc was a little radioactive, he agreed with your father that we shouldn't dare go any further. Just for now, until we know more. How are we going to find out if we don't take a chance once in a while? It's one thing to be cautious, Hedges. It's another thing to be just plain scared. Victor, you're being rude. Oh? You're taking his side, are you? Oh, my. Look, please don't argue on my account. If you give me a hand, I'll go to bed. Quite a busy day. Good night, Claire. Good night, Bob. What are you trying to do? Sounds like you're just aching for a fight with Bob. I don't worry. He wouldn't dare start anything. That's not the point, Victor. I just don't cherish the thought of being married to a bully. Nah, he's getting on my nerves. Here we are standing on top of the greatest scientific advance of the age and afraid to move. Well, just think of it. The first man to unlock the future would... really be on top of the world. Victor, you do need some sleep. And it could mean a new age, a, a golden age. Now that we know they can read and write, why, why soon we'll be talking to them. Oh. Oh. Excuse me, Professor. Oh, I, I'm sorry, Bob. I get wound up. Good night, Angelo. See you tomorrow. You know, it's funny about Angelo not wanting to live in the main house. You'd think he'd be lonely out there in that shack. Are you thinking of adding Angelo to your string of conquests? Victor, that's terrible. I've had just about all I can take for one day. I'm going in. You coming? No. You go on ahead. I've got some thinking to do.
there is something. Come on. I think he was doing a little peeking. I think you ought to keep the shades drawn. I'm sorry I made such a fuss. First Victor acts like a fool and then I scream my head off. You must think. I think we ought to make it unanimous. I thought you were the cautious type. Was I taking such a risk? It's all right, Claire. I... Well, I see that Bob has evidently told you. Maybe we're lucky the noise didn't wake Victor. Wasn't Victor on the porch? I heard him say he had some thinking to do. Let's give him something else to think about. Choosing me a peeking at Miss Claire. Man my age. Why didn't you mention any of this to me before? I wasn't sure, but Victor's sore arm cinches it. Somehow he's managed to bring life through that apparatus. That thing I saw him throw in the pond was one of his failures. But last night he must have gone further. Frankly, Bob, I'm a little disappointed in you. These wild accusations against Victor. Disappointed? After what I saw between you and Claire last night. Well, let's just say, I think you've lost your objectivity. Claire has nothing to do with this. I'm talking about things I've seen with my own eyes. Bob, you, you remember how you insisted upon testing our experiments in your own way, how, how you wouldn't even believe your own eyes. Of course. Show me. Bob, wait a minute. Are you 
going swimming? Yeah, I am. Me, I was right. He jumped me. He tried to kill me. I think I've had enough of your wild accusations. All right. See for yourself. Those aren't just scratches. They're radiation burns. Now that we've gone this far? Victor, we're taking you to the hospital for your own good. The amount of secondary radiation you've absorbed could be extremely serious. There's nothing wrong with me. You're trying to do. You want to get rid of me so you can claim all the glory for yourself. Victor, for the last time, what caused those scars? Did you materialize some form of life? <laughs> and you're calling me crazy? One thing I do know, Victor, your condition is serious. It will take a qualified radiologist to determine just how bad it is. Now, come on, get your things together. We're taking you to the mainland, to the hospital. tell yet. We'll have to run a series of tests first. When will you know? We should have the results in two or three hours. That long? I'm afraid so. Why don't you run along and get something to eat and call us? All right, I'll call.
I'll let you know as soon as possible. Did she reach the doctor? There's been some confusion. The girl at the desk and Sissy went home. That's impossible. I'd better talk to them. Now, don't get excited. Nothing to do but wait. Is there a good movie in town? Looks like your whole outfit's having quite a night of it tonight, Professor. That's right, but back to work tomorrow. Thanks. Better not count on any work from your assistant tomorrow. Why not? Are your drinks that strong? No, the other fellow. What's his name, uh, Victor? Was he here? He was here earlier. Got pretty drunk, and I finally had to ask him to leave. Hey, Joe, will you turn on a TV set? Victor here? He, he must be mistaken. Dad, look at the TV. What about it? When Dad ran his apparatus here in town, it caused the same kind of disturbance. Well, let's not all get jumpy just because a TV set goes on the blink. No, Bob, she's right. It formed a distinctive pattern of interference, that pattern. What does it mean? Someone's operating the apparatus, operating it at a higher voltage than ever before. Come on, let's get out of here.
he'll blow out the generator. So I come up the... Everyone's in the laboratory. They need your help. Victor's been hurt. Yes, ma'am. Don't come near me. Your face is horrible. Angelo, take the boat. Bring Dr. Blair. Hurry. Never mind that now. Get some blankets and hurry. He's going into shock. He's going to need careful watching. He could take a turn for the worse at any time. Well, I'll stay with him. Fine, but since you don't have a phone here, it would be best if I sent over a nurse. Well, whatever you think best, Doctor. His face. It's all burned. Stay away. Stay away. Please, Victor, please. Well, There, that should at least give us back the power. Try the switch, Bob. <laughs> Nothing like a little light to dispel a man's fears, is there? <laughs> what do you think it was, Bob? What frightened a man like that? I don't know. I have a feeling that part of the answer they're still in those boxes at the bottom of the pond. the skin diving equipment. You were the one that was being so secretive.
just an ordinary house cat. It's not like any cat you've ever seen before. What's so different about it? Well, never mind now. I'll tell you about up the house. Bob, come here. There's something there. What's that? <gasps> Same kind of burn, says on Victor's eye. You don't think he was drowned? No, no, he was already dead when he was thrown into the water. Thrown? You don't think it was some kind of wild animal? Whatever killed Angelo had the cunning to try to conceal its victim. How's Victor? He's all right. He wants to talk to you. We'll be right there. I told him about Angelo. Y you shouldn't have done that. I'm glad I did. He says he knows what killed him. Anyway, after I succeeded in bringing through that cat, I knew I was on the right track. It was just a matter of pushing the apparatus to its limits. Cat? You call that horrible thing a cat? Well, I, I thought that I'd contacted savages and that cat was something their witch doctors had made. Nobody made it that way. It was born that way. It's a mutation, a freak, caused by excess radiation in the atmosphere. Well, that explains that woman. Her face. If she came from the same place that that cat did, it's a wonder you could still recognize her as a woman. The cat's body is still extremely radioactive. You're lucky your burns weren't even more serious. Don't worry about me. What's well, that creature, that, that woman I'm worried about? I'll, I'll be all right in a little while, and we can go after her. No, you won't. Dr. Blair is sending over a nurse, and you're going to stay in bed and do just what she says. I wish she were here already. It'll be dark soon. We've got to do something about that creature. He's right, Professor. We've got to stop her from getting off this island before she goes and kills somebody else. speaking English. What did you expect? But the letters on the key were in Greek. Key? What key? Who are you? What do you want? No, wait. You must help me. No. Stay away from me. Your face. No. Stay away from me. like a woman screaming. Yes. You got a gun in the house? Only my 20-gauge shotgun I use for ducks. Let's take it with us, just in case. All right. Better put on our anti-radiation suits. Yeah.
you were expecting me? Why, of course. Come in. You must be the nurse Dr. Blair sent over. Yes. You'll be happy to know your patient is much better. We were expecting you earlier. Yes, but it's all right. You came just in time. Now I won't be so frightened when you have to leave. You don't blame me for what I did? Of course not. How could you ignore another human being's cry for help? You know, you're a very remarkable woman, very unusual. Perhaps more unusual than you realize. Your hands, but they're like the woman's last night. Don't be afraid. Look at me. Am I so terrifying? The, the face last night, it, it was... It was... If you will listen, I shall explain. the ever-increasing amount of radioactivity in the atmosphere. By the year 5000, every fifth child born was a mutant. Unable to cure these freaks, our rulers put them in special isolated colonies. It was one of these colonies that your apparatus probed, and one of those poor unfortunates whose image you saw last night. But you... How did you get here? I was selected to come and lead you into our world of the future. You must come with me. We need you. Why? Only with new blood, with undamaged pre-atomic genes, can we hope to break the terrible hereditary chain of more and more mutants born into each generation. Everything all right? We're getting along splendidly. Why don't you try and get some sleep? Very well. First, I think I'll get you some fresh water. Oh, I'm sorry, how clumsy. I just got the kitchen Victor. I must have been dreaming. Victor, are you all right? <laughs> I think I'd better stay with him for a while. No. It is better that he sleep. Please leave us now. You must put on something to do the same. Victor, what are you doing? I'm going into the future. I must go. No, I must go. Leave him alone. Look. Her face. It's, what, what could have happened? Who do you suppose she is? There's, there's no... Why, she must be the nurse. Nurse? The nurse that Dr. Blair was sending over. But the nurse came to the house. 
We better get back there. Victor, listen to me. She's hypnotized you. You don't know what you're doing. You don't understand, Claire. I've got to go. They need help. Oh, Victor, you're all confused. It's you who are confused. Our history clearly records how the women of the 20th century stood idly by while the atmosphere was contaminated and the children of the future doomed. She's right, Claire. If she's so right, why did she have to hypnotize you? I warn you, don't force me to kill again. Again? You! You're the thing that killed Angelo! I did not wish to. He surprised me. He would have spoiled my mission. Did you hear that, Victor? Did you? Now what do you think of your angel of mercy? Stay back, Claire. She'll burn you. Victor's body short-circuited the chamber's voltage. She said every fifth child was being born that way. Is that what the future holds? More like her? We've got to reach them, Professor. See to it they get the necessary hereditary genes they need. Do you suppose we could repair the machine perfected so that a man could travel through and return? If you do that, others like her will come. There may be millions of them. You're right, Bob. But there's another way. The future is what we make it. Whether there will be creatures like her depends on us. On all of us. On mankind. On what we do today in the present. folks, it's time to say good night. We sincerely appreciate your patronage and hope we've succeeded in bringing you an enjoyable evening of entertainment. Please drive home carefully and come back again soon. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>